So guys, I'm oh, I am proud of who I am and everything about me. And if anybody else doesn't like it, they can go and get lost. So last night I was reading this out loud. I, I read out loud because I like remembering books I read as a child. And this is Enid Blyton's The Famous Five, Five Get Into a Fix. And I'm now going to read chapter three, The End of the Journey. Well, we'd better turn around and go back down the hill, said Dick, as the driver came back to the car. No, wait, I'll just hop out and see if there are any lights anywhere, said Julian, and jumped out of the car. I could go up the drive a little way and see if I can spot the house itself. It can't be very far. After all, we spotted it just now as we came up the winding road. He went to the gates and looked at them in the light from the car's headlamp. They're padlocked, he called, but I think I can climb over. There's certainly a light somewhere beyond, though how far, I don't know. But before he could climb over the gate, there came the sound of running footsteps behind it, and then a loud and savage howl. Oh! I don't think that was savage enough. <laughs> came on the night air, and some animal hurled against the other side of the gate. The driver got back hurriedly into the car and slammed the door. Julian also ran to the car, finding his legs could go quickly if he wanted them to, for all their feebleness. Timmy began to bark fiercely, Rah! and tried to leap through the closed car window. The howling and barking behind the gates went on and on, and the dog there, which must have been a very big one, continually hurled itself against the gates, shaking them from top to bottom. Better turn round and go, said the driver, scared. Oh, I'm glad I'm this side of those gates. What a din. That dog of yours is almost as bad as those. Timmy was certainly furious. Why wasn't he allowed to get out and tell the other dog what he thought of him? George tried to pacify him, but he wouldn't stop barking, and the driver began to turn the car around, cautiously backing a little, and then going forward and backing again. The road was fairly wide, but there was a very steep slope to the right side of the car. Old towers were certainly built on a mountain side. The people there must be jolly scared of burglars to have a dog like that, said Dick. Yet it's such a lonely place, you wouldn't think many people would come near it. What's up, driver? There's something wrong, said the driver, who now had the fit car facing back down the road again. The car seems very heavy to drive, all of a sudden, as if I'd got the, my brakes on. Perhaps you have, said Julian. Well, I haven't, said the driver shortly. That is only just a little to make sure the car doesn't shoot off down the hill. You can see it's pretty steep here, and there's almost a cliff. Your side don't want to drive down there in the dark. What could be the matter with the car? It will only crawl. I thought it came up the hill terribly slow too, said Dick. I know the road was steep and winding, but didn't it seem to you as if the car was making heavy work of it? Well, yes, it did, admitted the driver, but I just thought the hill must be steeper than I imagined. What is the matter with this car? I've got no brake on at all, and I'm pushing the accelerator down hard, and she still crawls, as if she's got a ton weight to pull. It really was a puzzle. Julian felt worried. He didn't want them to have to spend the night in the car lost in a cold countryside especially as now it was beginning to snow lightly. The moon had disappeared behind heavy clouds, and everything looked very dark indeed. They reached the bottom of the hill at last, and came onto the level road again. The driver heaved a sigh of relief, and then gave a sudden exclamation. What's happened? The car's all right again. She's going like a bird now. Wow, that's a load off my mind. I thought she was going to pack up and leave us to spend the night here. The car sped along well now and everyone was most relieved. 
must have been something wrong with her work somewhere, said the driver, but I'm blessed if I know what it was. Now look out for a house or a signpost. They actually came to the signpost not long after that, and George yelled out at once, Stop! Here's a signpost! Stop! The car slid to a stop beside it, and everyone looked at it and gave a shout of delight. Mago Glen! Hurrah! Up to the left, said the driver, and swung his car into the lane. It was rather rough, and obviously only a farm road, but there right up the hill they were now climbing was a house with light shining in the window. That must be old Mrs. Jones' farmhouse. Now, I'm not going to read any more, but I can't remember reading this book as a child. I, I remember other books and they I used to love a new book it used to be thick and bulky and new books now are made cheaply with cheap covers years ago they used to be thick shiny and new and I just loved the smell and the look of a new book but I was a very quick learner and I read learnt to read at four or five. I was reading books and books and books. Because and, there wasn't any computers back in 1975-76. There wasn't um, internet either. And it was old-fashioned with old ball games and books that you read. Of course we had the television and we watched films, but there was no internet. Uh, no internet bullying, a bully and a bully would have to bully you face to face and not hide behind a computer back then. See you later guys.